Good morning. Happy Friday. It's coffee and a card time. And again, I'm trying something new. Boy, I'm just getting too beside myself here. I'm actually think I'm streaming to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Whoa, amazing, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, with this, um, I'm using StreamYard as my software, and it says I can do both. And there's a little check mark next to both. So I hope people are joining on. Make sure you leave a comment and say hello, and um, it's all good. We'll see how things go. Please say hello so I can check that I'm getting comments. Okay, Krista, first one in. Morning. <laughs> okay, excellent. All right. I am going to be casing a card. And if you don't know what case means in the stamping world, it means that you are copy, you're going to copy and share everything. But it doesn't always have to be everything. It's okay. You got to copy a card and you can do it exactly. I'm saying don't go crazy trying to find inspiration, you know, having to do your own thing, having to come up with all your totally new ideas. You can just look at something, copy it exactly, or take elements of it and just go, um, you know, just take elements of it and expand on that. Okay. So, you know, it should be all good. Now I'm seeing, um, hey, somebody's, okay, Faye, hi, Faye. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. My cursor was over some of the comments and there was kind of like a shadow over it. So I didn't understand. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. This is fun. I see um, as the comments are coming in and see if it's coming from Facebook or YouTube. So I guess we're good. Yeah. Show me thumbs up if things look okay to you. And Hopefully, we'll um, get a good group on this morning. I see some of my regular friends and um, some of my downline. Excellent. Krista Faye, Jackie, and uh, Judy. Good morning. I'm so glad that you <laughs> yeah, got a break from shoveling. Well, we're getting a lot more snow today. So we woke up to maybe two or three inches, maybe three inches. And it's supposed to snow pretty much all day. It looks beautiful outside, like a little snow globe with snow coming down. So if you don't have to go anywhere, enjoy, sit in, be cozy, get a warm beverage. I've got a nice, huge coffee mug today because it's going to be one of those days. Um, I don't fill it all the way up, though. It's okay. So good morning, everybody. Leave a message because you will get to be in my raffle. All right, so I do a raffle. I send out a prize, usually some embellishments or ribbon or something fun like that, a little happy mail that you'll get. And it does have to be in the U.S., though. So, um, it, you know, too much shipping and whatever to go overseas. So if you are in the U.S., um, you will be entered into the raffle. If I pull your name and you're not in the U.S., then, you know, you can tell me to pick somebody else, okay? All right, all right, so it looks like we have six team people on and people are giving some thumbs up and hearts. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Um, as we're just letting some people sign on real quick, I am actually kind of be doing a little die cutting here. Um, last second, I decided, oh, let me try another version of the card. You know me, I'm always trying a new one. <laughs> Got a last minute here. Um, I am going to be casing a card from one of the catalogs. I'm not telling you which one, so I hope you have them ready. I warned you in my Facebook post, and it will be a card that uses a different stamp set, some different colors, but it's going to be the same layout. There will be some elements that are the same, and you will have to try to find which one it is. Now, you can put your guesses in the, in the chat here. Um, if you're watching the replay, you can put your guesses in there and I will put up tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will tell you which one it is. So come back, actually, I'll do it on Facebook um, and maybe I'll, I'll put it in the description on the YouTube too. All right, but uh, that would ruin the surprise for people who watch it later. Hmm, I don't know. I'll have to think about the YouTube part, but I will definitely put it on the Facebook and um, if I, eventually get this up on my blog, then I can put it on my blog. Okay, it's a little hidden little link. Okay, oh fun, like a scavenger hunt, right? All right, so good morning, everybody. Oh, there's Patty and Michelle, boy. Oh, 
almost uh, a lot of my team members here. Wow, that's awesome. But we had a great meeting last night, and um, I meet with my team once a month. We discuss the Stampin' Up! news, things that are going on, and uh, we do a project, and we support each other. We ask questions and figure out, you know, how each demonstrator, even if there's a hobbyist, you know, can improve on what they're doing. And we just have a lot of fun. We're getting to know each other. And last night we were brainstorming some names for our team as a, our, a team name. Okay, Some demonstrators have a name for their team. Now, obviously I'm stamped with Lorraine, my, my business name, my domain name. And um, I have the Daisy logo. I'm wearing a new Daisy shirt today. Um, this is, uh, another life is good shirt. I love it. And I saw the Daisy and said, Oh, I'll order that. And then at checkout, I said, Oh, do you want another one in a different color at 50% off? I said, yeah, of course. So I have another one too. So lots of fun. Lots of fun. So we were brainstorming the name. And I was thinking, gee, should it be something with a Daisy or whatever? I'm not going to tell you what it is. Nobody say it from my team in the, in the chat, but I do have to confirm with Stampin' Up! that it's going to be approved. So once it's all approved, I'll reveal the name of our team. And speaking of team, there's a good join offer. I've mentioned this before. Um, check it out on my um, on my online store, lorrainesish.stampinup.net. And um, or you could just read it on the Stampin' Up! website. And then we will, um, you know, we can have a chat if there's some things there that sound interesting to you. You get a discount, you get things, you get to buy things early, you get to be part of my team and the bigger Stampin' Up! team and uh, Facebook pages and lots of support. So if you have any questions or you're interested, give me a call. This special join offer, you get $30 more in your starter kit or you get the glass mat package, um, which a lot of people are loving. I didn't order it because I told you last time I have a huge glass piece on my work table right now it's about about three and three three inches <laughs> it's about three feet by two and a half feet covers my whole little it's like a kitchenette table that i have here so anyway um let's kind of get started all right see a lot of people are on good morning good morning a lot of familiar faces and okay so when we do lives guys um be interactive this is live for you to talk, ask questions, and, you know, so I can see, you know, what you're interested in and we can have a little discussion. Otherwise, you could just be watching a recorded video. So live is about engagement. So say hello to people that you've seen here normally or, you know, some make some comments and um, we'll have a good time. Okay. Hi, Barb. Nice to see you again. Another team member. Awesome. So... Before I get started, some of you saw my post. I was cleaning up my stamp table and some of my drawers behind me, whatever. And, you know, when you have a lot of die cuts, you put some aside and whatever. I came across these. It's a little baggie of mousse. Anybody remember the mousse punch? Okay, it matched up with a stamp set that I didn't have. And I didn't have the punch either, but... I thought this mousse was adorable, and I have a friend and downline who had the mousse punch. Well, she and I just happened to be going to West Point for an Army football game. And we, while we were there, we met up. I said, oh, bring the mousse punch. So there we were, West Point parking lot tailgating our brunch because their games are at one I mean at noon so we had breakfasty brunch kind of stuff there we are in the parking lot with our coats on and bundled up punching moose <laughs> and one other time we did an exchange of some product and whatever so think about where was the craziest place or time where you did some stamping project <laughs> Okay, uh, that was kind of one of the things. Yep, here we were, West Point, parking lot, punching out moose and whatever else we were doing. <laughs> so it was, that was fun. So yeah, tell me a crazy time or place where you were stamping or doing something crafty related, okay? I would bring my stamping stuff to my daughter's um, music rehearsals 
as sometimes we had a drive away, so I wasn't able to drop her off and then go back home. So I would have to sit there through the rehearsal. Not that I mind because I love hearing the music. And I would bring my stamping stuff. Sometimes it was mounting my stamps. Remember the days we had to cut them out and then put the decals on and then put them on the wood blocks or um, just at least put the decals on. So I would bring that or I'd bring some simple stamping projects and just sit there and do it. It was good. But yeah, the football game thing was probably the craziest one of all. <laughs> okay, yeah, Barbara caught up early. Oh, good for you. Okay. What's everybody drinking today? Got a big cup of coffee, fresh brewed, just made it. The one I'm having today is the Zeke's brand. It's a Baltimore brew. Um, black and orange, it's called. So it's a blend of two different ones. So it's very good. Okay, so I don't know which card I should start with. Um, hmm. All right, well, my last thought I'll put aside, a more recent thought here. I'll put that one aside and we'll start with the one that I really did plan on. And if there's time, we'll get to that other one. Okay, I will turn my camera down. And remember, like I said, put a guest in here. You can tell me the page number and you can tell me the um, stamp set, this page number and stamp set of the original card that's inspiring my case. Got it? I'd like to see your guesses here. And tomorrow I will reveal what it really was. All right. Okay, so here's my work table. I'm going to switch that around. Yay, it's working. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to watch um, some of my comments as I go, but as I'm watch, doing my project, I might not see them all, but I will respond later. Okay. Nice people have water or coffee or whatever. Okay. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Michelle. Joanne. Nice to see you all here. So we need to start a white card base. When I do white card bases, I like to use the thick card stock. Just gives a little bit more stability because our white cardstock is thinner than our colored cardstock. So the thick white is really better for the card bases. So I keep a stack of that on hand. Then we need a card layer that is, well, our card base, I typically everybody knows, but I'm going to remind you eight and a half wide by five and a half tall, scored at four and a quarter. Okay, our standard card base. This card is going to be horizontal. I need a card layer that is a quarter inch smaller. I mean, no, I'm sorry, this one's gonna be full size. Okay, in the catalog, it's a full size. It's not a, an actual, you don't see a border. You can make a border if you like, but this one is just the full size. So five and a half by four and a quarter. Okay, so it's gonna cover the whole card front. Before we glue it down, we always do our stamping and other embellishments first. I'm using, surprise, surprise, um, one of the favorite sets that people have, have been loving, the Painted Lavender and the dies that coordinate with that. I'm going to use the... Um, the big flower bunch, the stems, and this other little spray of leaves here. Those are the three I'm going to start with. And I'm going to use this big spray of leaves to do a background on here first. And I'm going to do tone on tone. Actually, you know what? I experimented a little bit. I was... Let me show you the difference here. I was thinking, this is the tone on tone. This is the Highland Heather and then stamped off. This is Gorgeous Grape and then stamped off. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, for a little, I might mix and match the two, all right, to have a little bit that's a little bit darker than some of the others. So I'm going to do a couple of them in the Highland Heather. I will. Leave this as my example and then I'll just start a new one. Okay, 
Okay, by stamping off, if you're not sure what that means. Um, let me just get a little scrap paper under here so I keep my desktop clean. Is you stamp first for a full size, um, full inked image. And then when you stamp a second time without re-inking your stamp, you get that lighter look. So it kind of looks like it's something in the background. And so I'm just going to do a couple of those. I'm going to do a couple in the gorgeous grape the same way. So I'm going to even angle these a little bit differently. And there, maybe another piece of it down there. All right, now I'm going to fill in with some of the gorgeous grape. So we'll have actually four different tones going on there. Okay, and because the grape is a darker tone, I'm just going to wipe this off on my, okay, there's no more ink coming off on my paper. I'm not going to bother doing a full clean because it's a darker color and the same tones anyway. All right, so here we go. Let's get more of this overlapping them like it's a little field of flowers. Maybe put some a little bit taller. This one down here. And then some over here. I'm going to fill in a little gap there. I don't matter too much. I think that will be covered. Maybe stamp off one more time up the side here. Okay. And while I'm at it, I'll bring some of that to the inside of my card. Just a little border. And I'm going to just stamp off first. Oops, I didn't stamp evenly. Stamp off first, and then I'll have a light image on the inside. Okay. There we go. I'll get this out of the way. Now I will clean this off. I'm going to show you my well-used chamois. It gets stained, but it still works. I've cut mine because sometimes it's easier for me to just pick up a piece and clean the stamp like that. So I cut it into different size pieces, but it does come the full one, as many of you know. Right, let's close up what we don't need. Um, actually, we will need these. I'm going to put my card base aside while we work on this. I'm going to... Stamp on some basic white. And what I was hoping for, I want to make a bundle of the, the lavender flowers. And I like the two-tone look. The only thing is, when I go to cut it out with my die, it's only going to cut the original image, you know, whatever I line it up with. So on this one, I actually stamped the Gorgeous Grape and the Highland Heather, and I offset it so that you know, it has both tones mixed in together there, right? Um, so it, um, but if I put my dye on there, it's not going to cut out all of, um, it's only going to cut out either the Highland Heather or the grape, right? Okay, um, Michelle asked, when do you know to get a new chamois when it's not cleaning anymore? <laughs> but, you know, mine's a couple years, several years old. I have not changed it. It hasn't worn out. Okay, it's a type of fabric, the, the chamois fabric that it is. It hasn't worn out. It hasn't broken. It hasn't torn. It um, might look ugly, but I mean, I have new ones in there too. But um, when it's not working for you or if you want a cleaner look, but once you start using it, it's just going to get dirty anyway, right? So, um, yeah, so it's a, mine hasn't worn out, uh, Michelle, so. Whatever you, whatever you think is is, um, is good for you. So what I did was I stamped one in Highland Heather and one in Gorgeous Grape. Now I'm going to try to maybe cut up one of these, overlay them, and mix and match them that way. All right. So actually, since I already did this, I don't need to stamp anymore. You guys know how to do that part. Okay, so going for that mixed color look, I'll put my dye back. Try to keep your dyes all together. You don't want them floating around and uh, 
Sometimes I've had to go digging in my trash can that's right next to me here because it's slipped in there and those little ones are hard to find. So I always try to make sure I put it back on my card or I have um, magnet sheets that I put them on. I just haven't gotten around to doing that here yet. All right, so let's see what we have here. Now I've also stamped and I cut the stems and they get layered which would be nice and so before i do that i'm going to kind of mix and match this a little bit so i haven't done this before trying it new in front of you i thought it could work i just sort of continue to cut around these little stems and then layer them on there put some in back and some in front. That way it's, you know, I didn't like just putting it on top because then it hid the ones in the back. It just didn't look too, it didn't look natural. So let's see, maybe, and I wanted to also vary the height. This side has all smaller stems and this one has all taller stems. So I wanted to mix and match. Let's put some of the taller ones in the back over here. Um, okay, maybe I'll cut this kind of in between. And you don't have to be exact because it's all zigzaggy here anyway. Put some back there, some in front. I just said, just don't do straight cuts because that would not look as natural, right? So maybe, maybe something like that. Maybe stick a little back there. Okay, I think that would look a little nicer because it's all mixed up, right? So that was my idea last night. So what I will do is... And put those together there so it doesn't look like it's just hanging out of nowhere. This one will have to be cut a little bit. Okay, so I like the way that looks. I'm going to use my crescent seal technique. Okay, using the crescent seal. I don't use this at all in my kitchen. I use a different brand. <laughs> But I do have it for the craft room. Because I like how that looks, I'm going to let me just cut this here. I'll use my sticky scissors because this is a little sticky. That's the whole idea. Okay. Can you like the way that looks? Thanks, Faye. I'm just going to press this onto those pieces of cardstock. And then when I gently pull it up, they're all stuck together in the way that I want them. I could turn them over and then I could get my glue or glue dots underneath all those layers. And it will be just the way I set it up in the first place. The other idea I think I showed last week or the week before is sometimes I'll take a picture of it on my phone and then look at the picture once I um take the pieces apart to glue them i'll watch my picture so i know how to reassemble it in the way i liked it and decided the first time okay so i'm just going to kind of do this get some glue behind there and you can use glue dots too that would certainly work you don't need to do a lot you just want to kind of hold it in place for now Okay, so those are the back ones. And just remember which layers are not connected, right? So I'll lift this a little bit, get some glue on those front layers. 
I said just enough to kind of hold it in place until you peel it off and then get the glue more permanently in there where you feel you need it. Okay, so one, two, three, and then there were two in front. I got them. Okay, good to count. Okay, I did put glue under five pieces. Okay, so then when you lift that up, um, do it very carefully. And in the first place, don't press it down too hard. Don't like really, really rub it because you don't want it to stick too much. You want it to just be um, a temporary hold. Okay, it's not like you're covering a bowl of soup or something where you want a really good seal. All right, and this stays tacky for a long time. I will use that over and over again. So now I have what I think is a nicer bunch of flowers because I cut that one up. Okay, and then we can put our stems behind there. So I can glue that together. I do have my silicone mat here. Put some up here. In case some glue seeps out, which it probably will, and I am sort of counting on it because I want all that to be covered. There's not much that's going to be holding that. There's just a little piece there. And I know it's going to seep out, but on the silicone mat, when it dries, it just rubs off. And if it's extra sticky or sometimes it gets a little... Um, might feel dusty from the fibers of the uh, cardstock. Just rinse it off in water and it's all good to go again. Okay, so now this one's going to go on this layer, but first we're going to put um, a little something else over here. And we are going to use a product that I haven't talked about yet. Yet it's been in the uh, annual catalog for a while and some people miss it. It's called Vellum Basics. A lot of people know we sell vellum, but this vellum basics is actually three patterns of vellum that um, come in one collection here. Let's see how many do you get? Oh, I don't have them in the back anymore. I'm sorry. But you have some polka dots. Let me get a piece of white so that you can see what that looks like behind there. Okay. Well. This envelope will work. <laughs> or maybe a color. Oh, let's see. Will color work better? Uh, yep, there you go. Okay, so we have some dots that are kind of in rows. It's not too much of a random. It's an organized you know, rows and columns. And then there is these beautiful leaves and vine-looking pattern. And the third one is diagonal stripes. Okay, so um, there are um, three to choose from, and I have chosen the diagonal stripes because I figured I have enough leaves and everything on here. Even though the leaves would be a good theme to carry over, I'm going to use the diagonals. Now, what I have here is a piece of, oh, you haven't found the card yet, but oh, a lot of other good stuff. <laughs> Right, Barbara, there's always good stuff for the next order. I know. There's always another order coming. Okay, two and a half inches wide by five and a quarter. So I made it an inch taller than my card stock. And the reason is we're going to score it at a half an inch, top and bottom, and fold it over. Now, when you're scoring vellum, don't go too hard on it because it will have a tendency to crack if you push too hard. You just want to make a little gentle score, half an inch there. Make sure you move your cutting blade out of the way. Just use the scoring tool. You don't even need to do, like I said, very gentle. Once you start it, you can get your fold. Later, it's all good. Okay, so you want half an inch on both ends. It folds very easily. And we're just going to fold that back because many of you know if you try to put adhesives on the back of vellum it will show through obviously it's very see-through and I purposely did some of my gorgeous grape 
darker leaves over here because I did want that to show through a little bit more. So those little flaps at the top are going to allow us to fold it over the card layer and we're going to glue it down there. You can use your glue or your stamping seal. I just so I don't have to wait for glue to dry. I'll use my I use seal plus most of the time. It's more expensive, but it it comes off the applicator so much easier. I just love it. Okay, so now we have a nice little um, fold, um, you know, vellum piece here with that nice pattern on there. And our flowers are going to go on there. And I will end up cutting the stems, but I'm going to figure out where I want that to go first. I always recommend getting your card layout in order before you do any permanent adhering. Let me close this well this with my bone folder. And then this will go right on top. And my flowers. And now we need a sentiment. And I would like to use from the coordinating stamp set the perennial postage and I will do I think thank you for your friendship because I have a lot of great friends around here that I would love to give this card to and it's a card you can go anytime I mean that you can give anytime right you can um a birthday a thank you or just any old time give somebody some happy meal happy meal. <laughs> happy mail you can get them a happy meal too if you want. But yeah, you know, the mail is is happy mail is nicer. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, any guesses as to which card I'm casing? Okay, put the page number. Which catalog? Okay, annual catalog or mini? You can put AC if you mean annual catalog. Um, and oh, I think I'll use this block instead. We'll see um, and tell me which stamp set is used in the catalog on the card that I'm casing. Okay. It has a similar layout. So we're looking for the um, tone on tone stamping on the layer. We're looking for something that goes vertically here, die cuts that go on top. And now we're going to do our sentiment. over there for now there we go and i think i'll just do this in black yeah all right so i'm going to use the uh, perennial postage dies these dies are great because you have so many different sizes <coughs> oh excuse me <laughs> so many different sizes here and I've done this before. I'm going to show you how you can cut it down. I think I, I did it with um, the hexagon punch recently for many of you. I'm going to show you how to do this one. So I want something that's going to be long enough for my sentiment. This one seems a little, it might be a little bit too long. Let me see what this other one is like. Look at these. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different frames. And basically it could coordinate with anything. The only thing that ties in really with the postage is, well, of course it's a postage cut around the edges here, but you have your little postage uh, cancellation stamp right there. Otherwise you can use it for any set. It doesn't necessarily have to go with the lavenders, right? Okay, so let's see if this one will fit. Um, yeah, that one would fit. Okay, that's a little too long. All right, we're going to use the second biggest size. And I'm going to get a piece of cardstock here. Hold on. All right, I have my bin of quarter sheet white paper. All right, so I would, didn't even have to have a piece that's bigger than my die because I only needed a piece. If I had a piece that's half the width, it's okay. That would work too. 
for instance, if I had this, actually that could that could work right there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to save this for another card layer since it's already cut to go. So that's where I'm, I know I'm going to cut. I'm going to stamp right about here, and then I'm going to die cut it after. So if I go through all the die cutting, if you end up stamping it messy. It happens. It happens to all of us. Okay. Okay, Judy thinks it's page 25 of the annual catalog. Maybe you can check those out, see if you agree with her. Page 24 from the mini catalog. Hmm. Check it out and see. Tell me your guesses. Oh, see, that didn't come out so well. These skinny stamps are, are tricky to get sometimes. I think I need to ink up my pad a little bit better too. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, much better. Yeah, I do need to add more ink. I do keep my memento refill right here because that's what I use the most, the black. All right, so I'm going to line up my frame. Now it's crooked on the page, but that's okay. I'm going to line up my frame with that sentiment just like this so it cuts the bottom. I like to hold it down with washi tape. As you know, this is old Stampin' Up! washi tape. I'm going to lay that on my number three plate. Look how etched this is. This is really <laughs> a well-used plate. And the question is, when, you, when do you know to change your plate? Well, if it's not cutting as cleanly as you like. Or if when you run things that have little intricate bits, you know, like a lacy design, and it keeps getting stuck in there and you have to kind of use your brush to brush them out and it gets to be a pain, get new plates. Maybe save these for embossing, right? And use your newer ones for the die cutting. Okay, so I'm going to just line that up with my sentiment, just like that. I think I'll put another piece on the other side to secure it. Like that. And if I can, I avoid putting the washi on my piece that I'm going to save. Um, if the washi is less sticky, sometimes I'll, I'll just rub it on my clothes or my hands a little bit, get some of the sticky off. Um, and just don't press it down so hard. You just want to catch it a little bit. But if I can, like here, I've caught it on the outside and I've caught it on the frame. But actually on what's going to be my tag, I didn't press it down there so much because it's holding the other place. And I don't want to risk tearing some of the fibers off of the paper. Then you want to do your, your sandwich. You have your one number one plate, your number two plate. You have your plate with your die cut and cardstock. And then you have your top piece. I'm going to run that through my embossing machine on my left here. Crank, crank, crank. Oh, that's going to look so pretty out there. Okay, and then that's what we have here. So now what we have to do is take our die and just reposition it on the top end, lining up those little notches that you already have on the paper and on your die. Okay, some of the dies that have smaller notches will, you'll have a little more wiggle room as to where you position it with these bigger ones you know you do have to make sure that you don't want to get any half little scallop thing and so hopefully i did that okay it looks like my sentiment might be a little bit high but it's okay i'm not going to worry about it i've learned to just let things go sometimes other people aren't going to notice i have to talk myself into it though <laughs> I'll let it go, but after I angst over for a little while. Okay, Nadine thinks Judy's correct. Yeah. 
who who loves or has or is going to get um, the lavender and or the postage. I know it's on a lot of people's wish list. A lot of my customers have ordered already. One of my newest downlines, um, my newest team members, um, she just couldn't wait to get this. And she was so anxious to join so she could get this in her starter kit. So she was all so happy. So now we have our nice little sentiment. See that? And it's nice and thin, just the size that we want. So that will go across a bunch of lavender. Like I said, I'm going to line it up. I'm also going to put my dye back. All right, so the other day, talk about missing things. The other day, I could not find one of my newest punches, the submarine. Okay, there's submarine life, I think the stamp is called. And I wanted to do something with that card for you today. Couldn't find the punch. I have over in the side here, I have my rack. Uh, from Stampin' Storage with all my punches in there. You don't know how many times I looked in there. I have, I usually have my animals on one side, my tags on the other side, all other types of images in the middle. I couldn't find it. I said, I know I used it at Christmas because I made a tag for my grandson. Um, he likes sea life. So I got him a little baggie of gummy sharks and I made a tag using the submarine. Couldn't couldn't find that that punch. I was I called my daughter. I said, like, "Did I loan that to you?" She said, "No, I don't have it." I usually write those things down, but you never know sometimes. And I was just beside myself. Well, it turns out it was right next to me. I have a bin right next to me here of all my brand new stamps that I um, that's prompting me to use those first and and new. It was in there, <laughs> kind of right under my nose, but not where I usually keep things because I had it with the stamp set, which was new, and I hadn't used other than for that tag at Christmas time. So yeah, funny story there. All right, so this is gonna go across. Thank you for your friendship. Now I'm, I'm gonna figure out where I want that to go before I cut my flowers. I don't know if I want it directly in between the top and the, where the stem is or not. Um, so I want it down and off to the side a little bit. Do I want this hanging off? Oh, I see a little piece that needs some trimming. Do you see it right here? This little point has to come off. I want to round that off. Well, that I noticed that. That's from where I cut it from something else. Whew. Okay. See what I mean about being meticulous? <laughs> Sometimes things like that will bother me. Other times I have to just let it go. All right. So let's see what we have here. Um, I think I'm going to cover where those two go because I'm not too thrilled with how it looks. In fact, the stems are not looking like they really go into the flowers there, so I'm going to cover that part up. I just have an idea. And I want to decide how high it's going to go. And if I want it hanging off the vellum or not. And, you know, lots of things you can do. Okay. I'm going to, I think I'll do it like that. Maybe just keep it to the left side of the vellum so it doesn't look too, I like things askew a little bit, a little offset on some things. Okay, Tina thinks it's 25 lighting the way. And she also thought 104, 105 vertical blooms. All right, well, everybody look up and see what you think. Okay, so now I can start gluing down. I've already glued my vellum down in the back here. It does seem to buckle up a little bit here, but once I put my other things down on top, <coughs> excuse me, that will, um, that will stay down. Also, the other trick is you can put some of your glue dots or your adhesive behind whatever's covering your vellum. So I think I will end up doing that as well. Excuse me, I need a sip of coffee. I took a lot of my throat. All right. Um, right. I'm going to glue this layer down. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, to make that um, tag smaller, you could do that with any of those those dies. You could do it with your punches. Like I said, I showed that with the hexagon punch. You know, I like using liquid glue when I'm doing this part because I can wiggle it to make sure it's covering the card front. If you're using one of your other adhesives that are really strong, once you put it down, you can't adjust it. Okay, so see, I do like how some of that's showing through. It is going to be covered a bit by my flower bunch, but that's okay. Sometimes you just, you can see through that a little bit yet. Okay, maybe more in person than on camera, I'm not sure. Okay, and we have a little thing inside. I'm going to put that down. I have to decide if you want to glue that down with dimensionals or just glue it down and put your sentiment up with dimensionals. Definitely my sentiment because that's going on top. So while I think on it, I will get my mini dimensionals out. My pick tool to pick them up with. Definitely, I like putting them on the ends for sure, and then I'll space out however many I think can go in the middle. Okay, again, I'm going to just think it out, lay it out. That's going to go there. And you know what I might do? I might glue the bottom part down and then just put a few dimensionals in the back to make it look like it's. Um, a fuller flower, a, fu a fuller bouquet, because the flowers on the bouquet are the things that come out at you a little bit more than the stems, right? Okay, so I think I will do that. A little glue there. Get my mat just in case. And a little bit glue there. Okay, so I know I'm going to be cutting some off there. I did put glue all around because I just wasn't, just wanted to measure where that's going to go. I want this a little off to the side. There we go. I use special scissors for my gluey things. I will let that dry just a little bit or wipe it off on my pad. Once it dries, it's just sticky. I always tell my girls in person, blue glue. Blue scissors are for things that have glue on them. When I'm cutting dimensionals or when I'm um, cutting something like this. Uh, tear and tape. Glue, glue. All right. And this will go across. Let me get some dimensionals behind there. I could do some of the bigger ones. I'm going to pull the top part off first. While it's on my card, and then it'll be easier to pick them up and slip them underneath. Rather than trying to pick this up and then pull them off. That's kind of like what I like. One there. Where's that other one? There it is. And let's put this up here. Put another one there. Now it looks like it's coming forward a little bit and the stems are behind. And while I'm at it, before I put my sentiment down, I'm going to put um, a few glue dots behind there. I'll pull it down so it doesn't buckle. You could leave it like that too. It's okay for it to look like that's a little forward. Not a problem. There's one. Just one or two will do it. And two. Oh. <laughs> Happy on the home front. You made it to a live show. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, glad you came on. Thank you. And then we'll put our um, sentiment across there. Then what's left is a little embellishment or some smaller die cuts, which I could do 
But to save some time, I'm just going to use embellishments. I'm going to put this across here. And of course, a little garden needs butterflies, right? Love the grass butterflies. And butterflies are two sizes. So, does that look crooked? It does a little bit. So, before it gets too permanently attached, so I can pry it up a little bit. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, some large and some small. Of course, this larger empty area, I would say, deserves a larger butterfly. And I'll put one down here and another one here. Tina, these are for you. <laughs> you will always be my butterfly person. All right, there we go. And I love the shine of the butterflies on there. Okay, nice to have different textures. You have your vellum, you have your cardstock, you have dimension, and you have a little shine from the butterflies there, right? Okay, so <laughs> there you go. So there's one card. I think that came out pretty. Okay, when I'm designing my projects, as you know, I, I will do one up. And then, of course, when I do another one, I can't, I don't want to do the same one with you because I like to show you different things. So I will try a new one or I'll set up for a new one, but I might not know exactly how it's going to look until I do it live with you. So thanks for uh, being in on that journey. <laughs> All right, so here's the other version of what I did. I did this one with the submarine life because I did find the punch. <laughs> And I like to show you guys different styles. Okay, so here's one with the pretty flowers. But now we can do the same case, the same layout with something totally different, like a little fun kid stamps, right? Doesn't have to be kids, just somebody who likes, you know, fun, cutesy little things. So what I did was I took the um, oxidized copper designer series paper which comes in two patterns, just the plain copper, and also this that has um, peacock in it. I took the plain one and I punched my submarine out of that. Now, of course, that designer paper, that foil is really thin. So I needed to support it more in the back. So I took some pecan pie. See, here's where I punched from the copper. I took pecan pie and I also punched that out and I glued it onto it. So this, the punch comes in three different, um, it's a builder punch. So there are three different parts to it. So you have um, the main submarine, you have the propeller and you have the periscope. So um, you have to piece those things together. So I already pieced it together with the oxidized copper. And then I said, oh, this is way too thin because I wanted to pop it up with the vegetables. So then I punched again with the pecan pots. I thought that worked well together. That's almost the same color. And if you notice also um, the stamp, okay, if you stamp this, it shows the windows, right? But when you punch it out, you don't get the windows because it's on the stamp. So when I punched this, I had no windows, but I really, really liked using the cup because it gives that, you know, like old metallic look of, you know, a, a submarine, right? So it has no windows. So using my imagination, my resources, I took a hole punch and I punched, let me turn this this way. I punched the holes approximately where that those holes are there. Now mine are a little bit smaller, but I think it still worked. I did one in the middle. Okay, this is a non stamp nut punch, just your typical, what is a quarter inch punch. Okay. 
Okay, so now I have my windows and I did one up at the top because this one has a little square window. If you have a little rectangular square punch, you can do that, but I just use my circle again. Okay, and there we go. And then I did the same thing. Well, I didn't punch the holes on the brown because I wanted it to look like the inside of the submarine. Now, if I had put this on there like that, it would look like, you know, you're looking at the water behind, right? So that's why I punched that. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you, um, I don't know if you could see it too much on here. Yes, you can. All right, take a look. This is a brand new punch. This is literally the second time I punched something with it because I punched once for my grandson's tag. Um, when it's new in the processing, they use oils, you know, when they're die cutting the metal and you know, making things work and, you know, greasing up the springs or whatever. So the first few times that you punch, there might be some residual oils on your, on your punches. So make sure that you, um, use it a few times, just on scrap paper, punch, 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 punch a few times to maybe work those oils off of it. Now, if you look carefully here, see, I did not do that but it was dark enough that I really wasn't going to care too much. And this is going to be behind anyway. If you look very carefully, do you see how some of those oils bled onto the paper? Right? You can see it's a little darker around there where some of those oils came off. There we go. So that just proves that there is some stuff there. So if you're punching something for the first or second time, make sure you, you know, work that off a little bit ahead of time okay hi debbie very nice to see you i was wondering if you'd make it i was thinking of you when i used my um press and seal i know that's something you like to do okay we used it to arrange our flowers on my last card so i used the same vellum but this time with the dots because that reminded me of bubbles in the sea I used for my tone on tone background, the little fish and the seaweed, just did that in blue. And then for my three little embellishments or other focal points, I stamped and fussy cut these three little guys. Aren't they so cute with their snorkels? Oh my gosh. <laughs> just thought that's adorable. So notice they're the same layout. Okay, of course, just floating by just on a, a piece of cardstock that I had a scrap of and then I angle cut it. Same layout, just two different vibes to them, right? So um, yeah, this would be a cute one to to send to, to a kid or anybody, somebody who likes to see, whatever. All right, so I'm gonna keep my submarine here. I have a little bin in front of me that has my little pieces, all my little extra die cut pieces. Now the thing is to use them so they don't just sit there and then I go digging. That's what happened with the moose. <laughs> they were at the bottom of this bin with all these little die cut pieces and needless to say, I never did use them. So I think I used one or two. I certainly didn't use like the eight or so that I punched, <laughs> whatever. All right, I'm gonna throw that away and and we're good there. So the last one, I don't know if I could do it quickly for you or not. Let's see how it goes. I want to try the, um, the jungle. Where did I put them? Where are they? Okay, here we go. The jungle pals, which is free celebrations. I stamped the tiger and I started putting a little bit of dark pecan pie in areas where I think would be darker. Think of where the light source might be and where the shadows would be, usually in crevices around the animal or the flower, whatever you're looking at. Maybe like if my light source is up here, then the top of him would be lighter and the underneath parts would be darker, right? Around the neck and this side of his chest. So I added a little bit of the dark pumpkin pie, and then I'm gonna go over it with light pumpkin pie, and we'll see what that looks like. I This is the first time I'm coloring the tiger, so it's all kind of practiced to me yet. 
and then we can kind of blend that in. We'll see how it goes. Oops, I went out of line a little bit. There's a good use for my color lifter. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit around his nose now that I'm looking at it. I'm going to put my lighter color over the darker color so it kind of re-moistens it. And then I could spread it a little more. Okay. So it doesn't look too much like a natural line. I could add another layer here to kind of blend it in and soften that. Okay, so the color lifter is not going, it's not really going to erase anything, but it kind of just waters things down a little bit. Okay, so see how I went a little out of line at the top of the ear here. So I am going to just go over that. It's going to take take just a little while. It's not going to happen immediately. But it does kind of, I like to say, water it down. That diffuses the color a little bit. I'm going to add a little dark to his nose. Maybe a little around the whiskers. I'll use the harder tip here. Okay, that works. Maybe a little up here. All right, cute, cute enough, right? And then that comes with dies, so that you can get the Jungle Pals stamp set for, with a fifty dollar order, and then you can also get the dies for another fifty dollar order. So this is um, okay. That's the celebration. And uh, these are the these are the guys right here. Okay, so um, let me grab this guy here. Oh, did I say fifty? Maybe it's a hundred. Oh my goodness, I should know that. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, if you have the catalog in front of you, mine is downstairs, unfortunately. Now I'm going to put this on there. I'm going to use another little piece of washi tape. Let's make sure it's not. I've used this already. I pulled it off, but it's still going to do the trick. Stick that on there. Run it through the die cut machine. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Nadine. I After I said it, I said, wait, that doesn't sound right. It says, the dies are 100. Thank you. There's a lot of dyes here, so usually that, that's a higher, um, a higher thing. Okay, so I will quickly stamp some of the um, greenery from, from the jungle one. I told you my desk wouldn't stay clean for too long. <laughs> And I've already lost the stamp set. How about that? All right, Jumbo. Jumbo Pal. Of course, put it back in my box next to me. See, you clean up and you don't know where things are. <laughs> if it's all over your desk, you can usually find it. Okay, so so there's the Jumbo Pals there. Um, it just has the animals. I wanted to show you that. Uh, the alligator would look cute with this card, too. Um, so I'm going to use the... Um, the vellum that had the vines on it this time. Because that would tie in with the jungle, right? So I'm trying to do this quick for you. I don't want to keep you too much longer than our hour. Excuse me while I cut. Okay, two and a half by five and a quarter. And I would use the, um, 
I would use the same, um, some of the, the, the same leaves, you know, but I would just keep them kind of low. So I will take this off here, I'll clean this one off. Even the um, seaweed can look like tropical plants a little bit, right? I'm just gonna do a little, little of that, I'll mix and match them maybe, using granny apple green. Looks like he's in the jungle. And my granny apple could use re-inking as well. A little bit more up here. There we go. So you can criss cross over some of your stamp sets to things that you didn't think would work together necessarily. Okay, now, I'm just going to leave it like that. Remember to score this half an inch on each side. Lightly on the vellum. Fold it back. Side where you want that to go. Pull it down. You want you to know what you're doing? It takes a lot of guesswork out. So go ahead and case. Case, case, case away. Yeah, so you'll get 150 for both. Hello, Melanie. Not Melanie, Melinda. Melanie's my hairdresser. <laughs> okay. And that one's a little crooked. I'm going to try to straighten that. See the seal plus really sticks on there. Okay, it's still a little bit crooked, but I will work on that. So I'm not going to finish this whole card, but this is where the tiger will go. And I use some of the other dyes, the little vines. I'm going to add those in shaded spruce. Coming across this way. I did two of those. I will put this all together later. And one mistake that I should have done was cut these out of um put them on my adhesive sheets first um because that would have been a whole lot easier to um attach them to my card so i will fix that on there and for my three little elements that go on here i will take some of these leaves and they will be my and maybe maybe that little flower we'll see those will be my three little things that go on here and then we'll put a sentiment across jungle palace doesn't come with a sentiment but i'll find something cute that will work for that okay but that's going to look cute as well right nice and colorful i love that so good luck with everything then today what's everybody working on today or this weekend anybody have stamping plans okay chris is loving the stamping blend good yep it takes a it's it's weird because they're not hard to use, but if you practice, you can get even much better results with them and make it look more painterly like trying to work with the shading. But it's kind of one of those things that it can go either way. It's easy to use, but then to get those really super, super great looking uh, coloring and shading, you can work a little bit with it. But, you know, see, like I did here, see how it all just blended in a little bit? And it really wasn't, you know, you can't overthink it sometimes. You know, just think about it lightly. Just think about where your light source would be and what things might look a little darker. You know, crevices of things or maybe just more shading on one side of an object and not on the other because the light is coming from one side. So just... It takes a little practice to be comfortable with it. Let me put it that way. Okay, but you don't really don't have to think too much about it there. Okay, Nadine's doing birthday and Valentine's cards. Great, shoveling the driveway. Yep, Joanne lives a little north of me, so it will be shoveling done for sure. Patty's doing Valentine's cards. Excellent. Excellent. 
Very good. Well, thank you, Joan. Thanks. I'm glad you like the idea. Helen, nice to see you. I'd like to see the YouTube people. Okay, sorry I didn't give you a heads up. So if you're on here, you just happen to find me. So thank you. Um, if you do hit the subscribe button and hit the bell, then you get notified of when I'm um, posting something new. And I hope you get notified when I'm on live too. So hopefully that works. All right. Thank you, Regina. You love the cards. Great. All right. So come back to Facebook tomorrow to so I can reveal what the actual card was that I was casing. See if you can find it. I only saw a few people guess. So maybe if you come back later, you can enter your guess in too. All right. So anybody who's commented live today gets to be in my raffle. And if I pull your name, um, come back next week and you know, see if you're a winner, okay? Because I may or may not already have your information. Um, I will post it on on Facebook. And um, so come back and check that if, if you are the winner, okay? Good luck, everybody. Have a great day and stay warm, stay safe, and good luck shoveling if you have to do that too. All right, bye-bye.